worshipping believer in Jesus Christ that has struggled with anger, control, self-worth and fear, and my name is Paul. See? So much better than the first crowd this morning. <laughs> All right. It's perhaps not the, expect, not the expected introduction that you would expect from somebody talking about recovery, right? What is recovery? I am a face of recovery. If we look at a dictionary, we might see something like the act or process of recovering from a sickness, shock, or setback. You know, the restoration of former or better condition or maybe even the regaining of something lost. The term recovery tends to conjure up those images of those of, of drug and alcohol users going into rehabilitation. You wouldn't be alone in thinking that. But recovery takes many, many forms. And we all, all need recovery in some form or fashion. Truth is, we all carry a hurt some description. For instance, how many of us have a guttural reaction when we hear a name from our past? Maybe we have hurt that we haven't dealt with. We all have a habit or an addiction of some description. Here's where I step on a couple of toes. How many of us would connect to God, to connect to the internet before connecting to God? Ouch. Goes for the jugular. Not all habits and addictions are sinful, but are they interfering with our vertical relationship? Is something holding you back from your full potential in God's presence? Some may struggle with food. Some may struggle with soda. Some may struggle with TV, game consoles, coffee, sorry, but you get the picture, and I'm not here to shame anybody. That is the last thing we're going to do at Celebrate Recovery, is shame anybody. We lightheartedly refer in the recovery world to two types of people, those that need recovery and know it, and those that need recovery and don't know it. Basically, we all have a hurt, a habit, a hang-up of some description that ultimately binds us. When you sat down, you noticed a small card. I'd like you to pick up that card, if you would, please. And on that card, I would like you to think about somebody that is struggling. On the, can you put the heart back up, please? There you go. On the screen, you'll see some of the, some of the things that we deal with within Celebrate Recovery. So what I would like you to do is I'd like you to write down the first name only of that person who is struggling and what they're struggling with. That person might even be you. It's okay. But just think about that for a moment. Pray about it. If it's not you, pray about that person. Whilst filling out the cards, I'd like to show a very small five-minute video that kind of highlights quite a few of these things. What? You act like you've never seen anybody like this before. Well, it's not easy on me, you know, being here like this day after day, bound up. And you're staring at me, doesn't make it any easier. Look, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that it doesn't have to be like this. That it could be different. Well, I don't want it to be different. I'm restrained like this because that's what I want to do. It's what I know. I know it's insane. And you probably think that I'm insane, too, don't you? Well, maybe you're a little insane, too. I mean, haven't you ever been stuck? Unable to let something go? Trapped inside your own pain? Pain from the past? And everyone that hurts you?
So why would I want to be free? So I can feel more hurt, more pain? No thanks. Look, I may be confined. I may be crazy. But I'm safe. I'm protected. Not so vulnerable. It's what I know. Believe me, I've learned the hard way. I used to be free, free to trust. Not anymore. Not after what they did. Sure, the details are different. My wife left. Dad was never around. Mom was too drunk to remember. But the stories are all the same. I need them to help me remember why I'm here. Why I can't let them forget. Why? Because they hurt me. I love them. And they hurt me. How do you just walk away from that? Huh? Do you understand now? How can I ever trust anyone or anything again? No. I can't untie this. I won't. Not now. I know this place. It's home for me. I got pictures on the wall. I can't leave. Who will remember them for me? No. It's better for me here. You, you go on. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. It's better for me here. It's where I belong. It's what I know. At Celebrate Recovery, we do value your anonymity and confidentiality, so we will make sure that these cards are shredded at the end of this day. Excuse me. That video symbolizes that we often have chains that bind us. Some of us may realize that we have those chains. Some of us may not realize that we have those chains. But as a church body, we're called to stimulate each other to one or stimulate one another to love. Hebrews 10.25 is a reference right there. Something that I firmly believe in is that as a church body, we're called to be a hospital for the sinners, not a museum for saints. I certainly didn't have it all together when I started attending church. Heck, I still don't have it all together now. But the church should be a safe place, a safe place to admit, hey, I'm having some issues. I need somebody to hold me lovingly accountable. But most of all, we need somebody, we need to be able to do that without fear of shame, without fear of condemnation, and most of all, f no fear of gossip. We're blessed to have a Celebrate Recovery here at this church. So what is the purpose of Celebrate Recovery? That's our next slide, guys. Celebrate Recovery is a Christ-centered program that helps us deal with life's hurts, habits, and hang-ups. The purpose of Celebrate Recovery is to celebrate God's healing power in our lives through the 12 steps and the eight principles found in the Beatitudes. Those 12 steps, if we'd rationalize those 12 steps, they are merely achievable goals. 
I'm not going to tell you that they're easy. There is not one person that's been through 12 steps that's going to tell you it's easy. The eight principles are simply attitude adjusters. I know I needed my attitude adjusting several times. So what is Celebrate Recovery? As we just stated, it is a Christ-centered, faith-based 12-step program that instills hope into the hopeless. CR exists to allow healing. We know we can't push water back up under a bridge, right? Meaning, we can't change the past, but we can heal from it. Over the years, we've witnessed how the Holy Spirit has used this program to transform lives. At varying CRs to help people grow and to achieve a Christ-like maturity. Celebrate Recovery can be and should be a front door to our church, not a back door like in times past with the attached stigmas. It's time to break those stigmas. It's time to remove those stigmas and truly love each other. And that sometimes means loving the unlovable, loving those that can't even love themselves. I know when I got into this program, I didn't love me. Some history on Celebrate Recovery. CR was founded because John Baker couldn't talk alcoholism in church, and he couldn't talk church at AA. So he devised a program to balance that divide and wrote a 13-page letter that was single-spaced, no much to be added. And his pastor read it only because it was 13 pages, and the response from his pastor was, great, John, go do it. So he did. In 27 years, six million lives have been touched by Celebrate Recovery. I have 30,000 churches on that slide. It is actually closer probably now to 35,000 churches in worldwide that have Celebrate Recovery. Celebrate Recovery is established in 40% of the prison systems across the nation at state and federal level. I had the privilege at the end of 2017 to put Celebrate Recovery into Greene County Jail in Springfield. The first two groups that went through the program 16 guys turned their lives over to Christ immediately. It was an amazing process. As you see on the slide, 36 countries now have Celebrate Recoveries and we have materials translated into 16 languages. So a question for you all. This is where a bit more participation comes in. You heard me mention 6 million lives. Quick show of hands. How many think 75% or more was drugs and alcohol. Show of hands. Anybody? Good. How many of you think it would be 50 to 75? A couple of you. How many of you think it's 25 to 50? Good few of you. Give yourselves a round of applause, the last guys, because it's 29% that are just drugs and alcohol. CR has 12 steps. It has eight principles. That is what differs us from most other recovery programs. This program, to be very blunt, is a bit like a parachute. You could pull the ripcord and change the course of your life or not. The components of Celebrate Recovery. Celebrate Recovery is the main umbrella and it's the most established part of the name. There is Celebrate Recovery and Celebrate Recovery International. We also have sub-programs called the Landing and Celebration Place. Landing is based for teens. Celebration Place is designed for, for children below teens. And it is the same material. So if the Celebrate Recovery is on the denial lesson or the powerless lesson, then so is the Landing, so is Celebration Place. Why? Because that way, Father and son, daughter and mother can go home and have a family-based discussion based on what they've just learned. That is why this program works. We often use celebrate, Celebration Place, we often call Celebration Place, I'm sorry, a pre-covery. Because ultimately, we want to give the kids 
tools so as they don't fall into the same cycles of dysfunction that as adults have been into. We also have Celebrate Recovery Inside, as you heard me mention earlier, the jail and prison ministry. Okay? We also have Celebrating Pastors in Recovery, CPR, because pastors need help too. Love on your pastors. For, just for information, pastor is actually in the top 10 most stressful jobs in the United States. So make sure you love on your pastors. Celebrate recovery mental health. This is an area very close to my heart. We need to break or help break the stigma that surrounds mental health. And especially mental health issues in the church. We need to provide a safe and supportive environment for people to openly discuss their mental health challenges. Suicide remains the second biggest taker of life in all demographics across the nation. Celebrate Recovery Welcome Home is a group for veterans, by veterans, targeted for veterans. Again, sadly, we lose 22 veterans a day to suicide. Celebrate Recovery has a motorcycle ministry called Broken Chains JC. It's not a full riding club. It's a bunch of bikers doing ministry as part of Celebrate Recovery. We also have Celebrate Recovery Native Nations, where we're bringing Celebrate Recovery onto the Native Nation reservations. So why Celebrate Recovery? Next slide, please. The seven reasons that I'll give you. Firstly, most importantly, it's based on the actual words of Jesus Christ. It is a spiritual growth and discipleship program. It is forward-looking. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. There is a difference between mourning and moaning. Mourning is grief. It enables us to pass from one season to another. And if we squash it, that's like shaking up a soda bottle. Sooner or later, it's coming out usually destructively or badly. If we swallow our anger, I look at myself squarely in the mirror on this, if we swallow our anger, our stomach is keeping score. So we deal with our past, we don't wallow in it. Celebrate Recovery emphasizes personal responsibility, accepting our parts in our habits, in our sins, and keeping our side of the street clean. You know, sometimes as guys, we don't like to admit that we're wrong sometimes. You know, I had to do that with my wife just this week. Okay? Celebrate Recovery calls for a spiritual commitment to Jesus Christ. He is our true and only higher power. Celebrate Recovery emphasizes growth and healing in the context of small groups. For those of you that don't know, there is over 50 one another's in the Bible. Over 50. That makes it pretty important in my, in my way of looking at it. You know, we need to care for each other, love one another, pray for one another. We just simply don't get well on our own. James 5.16 tells us, therefore confess your sins to one another, pray for one another so that you may be healed. Number six, CR is a leadership factory. How is a recovery program a leadership factory? I think as many of you are asking. Until one truly experiences healing through true grace, how can we show that grace? And lastly, number seven, Celebrate Recovery takes the fall of man seriously. We're all broken. We're all broken. None of us are perfect, but every one of us is perfectable in Christ. Back on the screen, you'll see the CR heart. Let me ask you a few questions. No show of hands. How many of us are struggling to forgive? How many of us perhaps have unresolved grief? Who perhaps is suffering from fears or anxiety? Is there someone that you still resent? 
and are others coming before you at your own emotional cost? It's also worth noting at this stage that John Baker, after he had actually got this program up and running, realized that the, the alcohol use was a symptom, was a symptom of an anxiety issue. Next slide, please. We've all perhaps heard the expression or the phrase, time heals all wounds. Unfortunately, this just is not true. We frequently talk with individuals that have pain from 20, 30, or even 40 years ago. Truth is, time often makes things worse. Wounds that are left untended tend to fester and spread through our entire soul. Time only extends the problem if it's not dealt with. Pain. We've all dealt with pain in some form or fashion. Many of us may still be carrying that pain, whether it be physical, whether it be mental, whether it be emotional, doesn't matter. But society has been telling us for years that pain has no purpose. Pain is weakness. Pain is trash. Pain should be discarded or even ignored. In Celebrate Recovery, we love acrostics, as you can see on the screen. Power always in new learning. Let's look at pain differently. In these modern days, you know, we, we actually learn the most during pain and adversity because we just don't want to go through it again. I know that was certainly the case for me. In these modern days where we recycle so many things, let's let God recycle our pain into something positive. We need to relate to others. That's how God made us. I know firsthand experience that this program works if you work it, and it don't if you won't. It's as simple as that. This program is not just behavior modification. We've all been told how to act, what to say, when to say it. This program allows us to heal. It allows us to remove the masks and be real. We don't have to act anymore. Each one of us Every one of us has a story, a testimony, if you like. Celebrate Recovery will help us build and write that testimony. And then we can share and use that testimony to relate to others. But why? Ecclesiastes 4.9 tells us that two are better than one because they have a good return on their labor. For if either of them fails or falls, sorry, the other one will lift up his companion but woe to the one who falls and there's not another to lift him up. Furthermore, if two lay down together, they keep warm. How can one keep warm alone? And if one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. And a cord of three is not quickly torn apart. Right now, we really need to come together. We need to be those cords. We need to be those strands that are not easily broken. We have numerous epidemics going through this country right now, and I'm going to pick three of them. Firstly, we have opioids that are spreading across this country at a rampant and alarming rate. Right now, we have 140 people a day pass away and die because of opioid-related things. To put that into context, that is the first 10 rows of this church right now. In Missouri alone, we lost over two people a day to opioids. And it's a statistic that broke my heart when I read this. We have at two births a day with fetal opioid syndrome. What is that? It's a fancy way of saying the new birth is already addicted to opioids. Two a day. In 2017, we had 89,000 prescriptions for every 100,000 people. That's nine prescriptions per, 100 pe per person. 
if you want to rationalize it down. Scarily, if our brothers and sisters get addicted to prescription medication, prescription medication, we're 40 times more likely to turn to heroin or other illegal substances because of their prescription being scaled back. If we lost 140 a day to the common cold or flu, I'm sure there'd be a lot more discussion about it. And probably more action. It would be totally unreasonable to expect that as a celebrate recovery that we go after that 140 a day. But just like the shepherd, we can go after just that one more. Just one more. The second epidemic, sadly, is still an old one, but it's still there. According to a JAMA report back in back the back end of 2017, 12.7, 12.7% of people in the US are living with some kind of alcohol-related disorder. That's one in eight. That's almost one in every row this, right now. These numbers have increased by 50% over the previous decade, indicating there's still a very sharp turning on this in the wrong direction. Just under a third of, you, of people in the US indulge in high-risk binge drinking. This rise was particularly noticeable in the following groups. Women, elderly, and Hispanics. The women was up by 57% over the previous decade. Which I'm gonna call on you guys right now. Gents, love our ladies. They're priceless. Love one another. Which brings me into the third epidemic, which is the elephant in the room when it comes to epidemics across this country. It's trafficking, human exploitation. People don't realize or even recognize that it's happening in our own backyard. Atlanta and Kansas City are probably the biggest human trafficking hubs in the US. Based on a report in 2016, and I'm sure these numbers are underreported, Based on this report, 67% of Christian men struggle with pornography. But here's a kicker. 45% of professing Christian women also struggle with pornography. Thus, fueling the demand for trafficked individuals in both pornography and prostitution. Many are predicting that the trafficking industry as a whole is very close to, if not already, greater in material wealth than the drug industries. Marriage rates are declining. First time marriages, that is. Why are they declining? Because of cheap sex. I know that's a term you would not expect to hear on a Sunday morning in a church. But it's an economic term to describe the comparative little cost in time or emotion, thus devaluing marriage. With pornography on demand, sex has become a commodity available at any time. It has left people with so little motivation for marriage. We have to start valuing each other, loving each other, holding each other lovingly accountable and praying for each other. There's a, th there's a theme here about each other, right? We're all carrying a hurt, a habit, or a hang-up of some description. So embrace a program that allows us to be without fear, without shame, and most importantly, without condemnation or judgment. CR can assist and support in anything you want to work on. At CR, one can share without fear, without judgment, without that condemnation, and can be encouraged knowing that we're not alone. Hearing, one another, hearing others going through similar challenges can provide such a level of encouragement. 
People can work on one thing at a time. As you heard me mention, I've struggled with four things and I'm still working on stuff. But we can work on one thing at a time, one day at a time, and sometimes even one moment at a time. So, the one slide. This is the next slide, yep. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. One can make a difference. About two-thirds of the way down, you'll see one candle can wipe out darkness. We can be that candle. We can be that difference. We cannot control anybody, but we can influence Change can be a fearful thought, can be an absolutely terrifying prospect to some. But with CR and the forever family that you find in Celebrate Recovery can help overcome that fear. I am living proof of it. Ten years ago, you would not have seen me standing here in front of a microphone. There was not a chance. So let's talk about those results that we had earlier. You filled out those cards, so let's talk about these, uh, these results that we had earlier. And I'm going to step out of the way and let you see these guys. Firstly, before we get into to the, the, the categories on stage, we have 27 unspoken. I'm going to challenge you to think of those that, that wrote unspoken. Think about why you wrote unspoken. Was it fear? Was it concern? Was it worry? Because that's what this program is all about, is overcoming that fear and overcoming that concern and that worry. As you can see, we have mental health, and we had 18 people put there for eight. For <laughs> you know, it's good. <laughs> um, 18 for mental health. For chemical dependency, which is a fancy word for drugs and alcohol, basically, is 15. For anger, we have six. For grief, we have four. Fear. We have four. Worry, we have three. Self-esteem, big one, two. Codependency, two. Loneliness, is two. And sexual addiction, is one. That gives you a very quick snapshot on what is going on in your church body right now. This morning we had similar numbers. Let's give these guys a round of applause, guys. I make this promise to you, and thank you for letting me share, but I make this promise to you before I close. This program works if you work it. This program is yet to fail anybody who is 100% committed or 100% honest. Again, I say thank you for letting me share. Marlon, I'll hand it back to you.